Hey folks, one of the things that I find that we can do to really help our figures to stand out from the crowd is to alter the fonts that we're using in the text embedded in the figure. The other thing that setting the font does is it allows us to more reproducibly generate our figure independent of what platform we're generating that figure on. One of the things I noticed as we were building out our drought index visual is that when I used GitHub Actions to build this page, um, the, the font seemed a little bit off compared to what I had been seeing when I was running it on my local computer. So the version of the figure that I have on top of the web page here was generated on my Mac uh, using the fonts built into the Mac, whereas the font uh, for the web page is the font that uh, must be the system uh, sans serif font that is on Ubuntu. And yeah, definitely it, the Ubuntu version is more spread out and not as compact as the Mac version. I don't know why it is, but I prefer the more compact version. Um, I'm pretty sure that the Mac version I'm using is Arial, um, and I don't know what font this is. There are people that can just look at a font and tell you what exactly it is. That's not me. <laughs> anyway, I say, I like that font. Eh, I don't like that font. So what I would like to do is to specify the font and perhaps use something other than Arial to maybe give it a little bit more uh, panache, right? Um, and if I set the font on my local computer and then I set it using the workflow, then I'll have a reproducible font across both systems in addition to making it look just a little bit better. We've done this in a previous episode of Code Club where we altered and modified the fonts using a package called ShowText. We're gonna do that in today's episode. So I'm gonna start out by coming into my code. So I notice I've got plot dro <laughs> by region, that should be drought, right? So maybe what I'll do before I get going too much further is to fix that name. So one temptation would be to go in and just manually add the T. That can cause problems with the commit history, however. So what I'll do is get MV. So within uh, the version control history, we're gonna use uh, MV to change code uh, plot drew <laughs> by region to code. Uh, and I'll use the tab autocomplete and then scroll back over to add the T here. The other thing I'll do is be sure to update my snake make uh, file. Then I'll search for plot uh, drought by region and blot uh, add the T there. Save that. That should all be good. And again, if we do get status, we now see that we've modified our snake file and we've renamed that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and commit this. So I'll do git add snake file. We're committing both status. Yep, so both are staged. I'll do git commit hyphen m fix name of plotting script. Great, okay. So now we wanna go into plot drought uh, by region and I'm gonna add library uh, show text. And again, we don't have that installed into our conda environment. So let's come over and do that. So I'll go ahead and do show text uh, and it's gonna be r hyphen show text and then we'll do conda and then we'll click on this first link here. And we see that sure enough, we've got our show text as part of conda forge and it's version 0 0.9. So I'll go ahead and activate my environment. I'll do conda activate drought and then I'll do mamba install hyphen c conda forge r hyphen show text. So that all installed, and that is show text 0 0.9 as we had hoped. And so I will come into my environment file here, and we'll go ahead and add that. And I'll add after the R markdown, I'll do R hyphen show text equals 0 0.9. Uh, double check that because I have no memory. <laughs> so that's good. That way when we run our snake file up on GitHub Actions, it will have show text as part of um, the environment. Very good. So we'll go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and load these libraries. So we have show text loaded as well as everything else. So I'll open up a tab and we'll go fonts.google.com. And I think for the title, I'd like a serifed font. And then for all the other text, I want to use a sans serif font. So I can come to categories and deselect all these options. And I like this Roboto slab. I think that would be a pretty nice, bold font to have as my title. So the command I'm gonna use is font add Google, and I'll then say Roboto slab, and then we'll do family equals Roboto hyphen slab. Uh, there's a non-slab Roboto, which is a uh, sans serif font. Run that to make sure it loads. 
So once we've added the font, we need to go ahead and load it into the system. So we'll do show text underscore auto. Um, and again, that makes the font family available to everything else. I can then come down to the theme and where I have plot.title, I can add to this family equals Roboto hyphen slab. And then I'll wanna go ahead and make sure I've got everything else run through this uh, so that we can then generate our figure. So I think that serif font of the Roboto slab looks pretty nice there in the title. I'm gonna stick with that. Again, what you pick is really a matter of personal preference. What I'm trying to do is pick some fonts that we can install and we can use as an alternative to the default. All right, let's go back to Google Fonts and let's pick a sans serif font. And so again, here's Roboto, which is the sans serif version of um, Roboto Slab, obviously. One of the sans serif fonts that I really like is Montserrat. So I'm gonna go with that for my subtitles and annotations. So again, we'll repeat what we did with uh, the Roboto Slab and we'll do font, uh, add Google, and we'll do Montserrat. And then we'll have lowercase Montserrat. All right, we'll load that and then we'll reload show text auto. So we have all of those fonts added. And again, what I'm gonna do is come back down to where we set the theme and we had plot subtitle, right? And here we'll do family equals uh, Montserrat. And maybe I'll put this on a separate line like that. And then I'll do the same thing for the caption, loading in uh, the, the family Montserrat. We'll go ahead and save that. Let's run it and see what it looks like. So I do like that appearance. One thing I might wanna do with our Roboto slab is maybe make it a bit bigger. Um, we've got 18 point font, if I recall. Let's see what happens if we go up to 20. I just feel like the text uh, is just a little bit too close in size. So I think that is better. It makes the title a bit bigger. Um, certainly stands out a little bit more over the subtitle and the caption there. Very cool. One thing that I noticed, however, is that we do have labels here for our legend. So we'll need to change that as well. So if we come to our legend text, we also need to add Montserrat there as well. So we'll do uh, family equals Montserrat. And there we go. We now have that Montserrat font. It's a subtle difference, but I like to keep things consistent. Okay, so now our figure is all updated. That looks good. This is the index page as it is rendered on my local computer. We haven't updated the figure yet, obviously, so we need to do that. And then we'll also want to modify the text in the lower left corner here to be Montserrat as well. So I'll do snake make, dry run, and we see that it wants to rerun the plot drought by region. That's great, and then render the index. So we'll let it do that, and I'll give it uh, C1 for one processor. And so here is the refreshed version where we've got our version of the figure baked into the page. And we can of course see that the text in the lower left corner isn't the right font. So to fix that, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this page down a bit. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and open up our index.rmd file, right? So you'll recall that we had a code chunk here, CSS, that produces the styling on our page. And so normally down here, we would do something like font family uh, and then sans hyphen serif. Uh, and that's the, the default, right? But we wanna use Montserrat instead. So what we might wanna do is something like Montserrat uh, and then sans serif. And I think maybe Montserrat needs to be in quotes. I don't know. Anyway. So what we need to do is we actually need to install Montserrat or get it installed when the page renders. And so we can do that up here by inserting some link uh, tags. But to get those link tags, we need to come back to Google Fonts. And again, we were using Montserrat. Within Montserrat, if I scroll down, there's a variety of different weights that we can get. I think the 400 looks pretty nice. I'll go ahead and click on that. And so over on the right side then, it gives us those link tags that we can use. So I'll go ahead and copy that, and then we'll paste that into here. And again, we're using family Montserrat. I'll go ahead and save that. And again, I did put Montserrat comma sans serif. And what that means is that if for some reason it can't get Montserrat from uh, Google Fonts, it'll instead use sans serif. So again, I'll go ahead and rerun um, Snake Make to rebuild that index file. And so now what we see in the lower left corner is that the text is no longer Arial, but it is in Montserrat font. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Again, 
you wouldn't look at this and say, oh, well, Pat made that in R uh, because it's obviously using R fonts and R styling. We have like really changed a lot of the styling here in this figure. The final thing that I want to do, of course, is let's go ahead and push this up to GitHub and see what it looks like once it's rendered with GitHub Actions. So again, let's do git status. Let's make this a bit bigger. And I'll go ahead and do git add period to add all these things. Again, the period always makes me worried. I insist on running git status before git add period, just so that I know what I'm adding. And then again, git status, all looks good. Git commit, and we'll do customize fonts on figure and page. And we'll do a git push. And then in a few hours, once this has run for the day, we'll check back in and make sure that the final web page that is up on the web actually renders the way it looks down here on our computer. So we see that sure enough, after GitHub Actions did its thing for the day, that we do get that updated version of the figure with the Roboto Slab title, the Montserrat subtitles, um, as well as that legend and the lower left corner caption. So this all looks really good. I'm pretty happy with the way this appears. There's a few other things that I'd still like to tweak about the figure and how we've done the analysis. So that you don't miss that episode, please, please, please make sure that you've subscribed to the channel. You click the bell icon so you're alerted of all the notifications. More than anything, what would mean the world to me is that if you went out and told your friends about what I've been doing here on Code Club and share this playlist with them that I'm showing over to the side, I think they'll really get a lot of great tips out of it, really helpful motivation for thinking about reproducibility, automation, and all the great tools that we can use to make it happen. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.